What do a measure of center and a measure of variability tell you about a data set? Think about this question during the lesson. The stem and leaf plot displays the data for sales at Carlos's Cuban cuisine food truck during the past two weeks. What is the typical daily revenue for the food truck? When analyzing the data, Check to see which type of measure of center or measure of variability would be most helpful to use to answer the question. Step 1. Determine whether a measure of center or variability would answer the question asked. Select your answer. Since the measure of variability describes the spread of values in a data set, it is best to use a measure of center in this context. A measure of center describes the average or middle of a data set. So a measure of center would best describe the typical or average daily revenue for the food truck. Step 2. Determine which measure of center is a more appropriate summary of the data. Since there are no outliers and the data are clustered together, use the mean to answer the question. The mean is $3,100. The median is $2,950. The average typical daily revenue for the food truck, or mean, is $3,100. Suppose that the next day there were sales of $7,100. What measure of center would you use to summarize the typical daily revenue of the food truck now? All right, I want to do a real quick review of what this stem and leaf plot data is. So they give us a key right here. This key is that the one represents 1,000 and the two represents the hundreds. So that's why it's showing you that the key is what it looks like that is 1,200. So I'm going to list all the data just so we're all on the same page on how to read a stem and leaf plot. So for this first one, you have 1,200, that's the first one, and then you have 1,400, that's the second one, and then you have 1,400 again. And then you move on to the next data. That's a two, so that's now 2,000. 100, I'm oh, sorry, I put 1,000. Then you have 2,500. Then you have 2,600, 2,900, and so on. So I just wanted to remind you of how to read a stem and leaf plot. So now we can go back to answering the question. It says, what measure of center would you use to summarize the typical daily value revenue of the food truck now? So that means they've added this 7,100. So that means if I were to add to my data here, now I have a 7 in my stimuli plot and a 1. That means 7,100. So now between 4 and 7, that's $3,000. So that makes that 7,100 an outlier. So when we have an outlier, the best measure of center would be to use the median instead of, I'm going to write that down, use the median instead of the mean, which is the other measure of center, because the mean would average all of the numbers. So we would add them all up 
and find the average. But because of that outlier, that mean would be skewed because of it. So the best measure of center for this data would be the median because the median, no matter if you have an outlier or not, it takes that middle uh, middle average, not middle average, but middle number of data, that middle set of, uh, of your data, which would be the best summary of the uh, sales that particular day. The line plot displays the data for sales at Wanda's Wonderful Wings food truck. How consistent were the sales? First, determine whether a measure of center or variability would better answer the question asked. In this context, knowing the variability spread would be key to answering the question about how consistent the sales were. Here to here, that's your lowest amount of data. This is your greatest amount of data. So the range of the sales at Wanda's Wonderful Wings would be 2,100. That's what the 2.1 represents. And here at 3.0, which represents 3,000. So we take the range, that's 3,000 minus the 2,100, and that gives us 900. So the spread of the data from here to here is $900. The IQR is 300 for the middle 50% of the data. Daily sales vary by at most $300. And let me clarify how they got that. Um, this line here represents the median of the lower quartile numbers. So that would give us about that's halfway between 2.6 and 2.7. So that would be maybe 2,650, let's say. And then the other end of the box here is about halfway between the 2.9 and the 3.0. So that would be um, the 2,950 which is between there. So when you subtract 2,950 and 2,650, you get 300. So that's where they got the IQR or interquartile range. <laughs> that's where they got that from, okay? Because the data are not evenly distributed, the IQR would be best to describe this. The typical sales varied by 300. So because they have this, excuse me, they have this um, data way over here, that means more of the data stays over on this side. So that's why the interquartile range is better than the range for the whole set of the data. Wanda wants to know her typical sales to plan for tomorrow. What measure of center or measure of variability should she use? So once again, the measure of center is either the mean or the median. And if we were to use the mean, that would give us um, the average of all of the data from here to here. But because a lot of that data is, most of the data is within this portion of our line plot, then mean would not be a good measure of center for her to use. Um, measure of variability um, would be best, and that would be um, the median, because the median would give us this number here, which is at 2,800. That would be the best data to go to plan for her sales tomorrow. A food delivery app claims that vehicles arrive in 10 minutes or less after leaving the restaurant. Data collected shows 25% of their vehicles arrive in three minutes or less. An online news report posted a graphic showing research on recent deliveries. What can you conclude from the news article? 
Here's the news article. It shows that the median is eight minutes. The third quartile is 10 minutes. The first quartile is three minutes. And the IQR is uh, subtracting the third from the first quartile and that equals seven minutes. And just so we are, again are clear on what these terms mean. So if we had a line plot, right? Um, let me just, this is a fake one. It doesn't have to do with any of the data in this problem. I just want to point something out. So here's what um, a line plot would look like. So your median of eight minutes would be found here, this middle number. Whatever number this would be, that's your median. So that's eight minutes, right? And then your third quartile, they mentioned here at 10 minutes, um, that would be this number here, uh, right here. This would be your third quartile. So that will say, um, it said 10 minutes. And then it mentioned the first um, quartile, which would be um, here. So that's your first quartile and that was three minutes so just wanted to make sure you understood if you were looking at a line plot what those words would mean so once again this is your median the purple is your median the orange is the third quartile and the turquoise um, here is the first quartile and then the IQR is just taking um, your t upper or third quartile and subtracting it from your first quartile. So now we'll go to reading the, about the median. Uh, the median described a typical arrival time of eight minutes. Half of the cars arrived in eight minutes or less. Half of the cars arrived in eight minutes or more. The rideshare apps claim might be true. The IQR described that the arrival time for the middle 50% of the cars was between three and 10 minutes. So 25% of the cars arrived in three minutes or less. 25% of the cars arrived in 10 minutes or more. Conclusion, the food delivery app's claim is false because at least 25% of the cars took more than 10 minutes to arrive. Adama tracked his steps every day for the month of January. The mean of his data set is 7,250 steps, and the range is 5,600 steps. Explain the meaning of each value. All right, for this, I had to type it. That would have been a lot of writing, and the writing for me on here is not the best. So um, I had to explain the meaning of each value. The mean of 7,250 steps describes that Adam walked 7,250 steps on a typical day in January. So that's what the mean describes. The range describes how the data set varies by, by 5,500 steps. That's the range because it can go from anywhere between um, the two numbers that's why it says varies so that is what you would have to write as an explanation of both mean and range in this situation